bush of little veggie tea. Uh, if you drunk, I hope you have uh, uh, tried our little veggie tea. Now, little veggie tea was the original variety in this region. Um, back in the days, they actually cut off a whole bunch of the little veggie tea and replanted China tea number two. Uh, the little veggie tea, as you can see, it's uh, the original variety always buzz along the branches, so it's much harder to pick. The yield is lower. Uh, uh, it takes uh, it's many different varieties, the lumps of uh, uh, many different varietals. It's much less hairy, um, and uh, but the, the 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 leaf is kind of thinner, it's kind of thinner, but it's actually meatier, if you, according to me. And then um, um, over here, you can see in the uh, grasses, those are all little veggies. So I hope this gives you a more visual, direct visual um, sense of how. Uh, the newer variety is preferred for productivity because it's buzz much even, more evenly versus the little veggie tea grows all over the place. The yield is lower, so it's not preferred, but it gives a much different taste than the uh, China tea number two. So uh, right now I'm at the. You this is called what? Jia Mei Chun, right? Jia Mei. Jia Mei. Jia Mei. <laughs> so this is uh, still in the, the Dianhu area, but this village is called the Jiamei village. Now this is their tea garden. As you can see, white tea, uh, similar to Tiehuang, definitely have a problem of over-cultivation. Uh, from the budding, I hope you can tell that this is a new variety. This is, a, uh, this is not one of those uh, uh, old varieties. However, this is one of the China's oldest new varieties. This is called China tea number two. Uh, it's called Da Hao. Uh, means white hair, a big hairy uh, as you can see it's a very hairy tea this is what gives white tea that super hairy uh, appearance uh, this is considered a better variety uh, the new even newer variety in this uh, area is called the uh, Fuyu number no. six which is uh, uh, but even more evenly so the picking of this tea is much easier you don't have to like you know go down the bushes to look for the tea but this is uh, uh, this is actually considered even better than Fuyu number no. six even though this is also lab developed now, the China tea number one was also developed in this area. However, it's, uh, um, uh, it's for some reason, it doesn't uh, bud very well in this region particularly, but it's considered one of the best teas in China. Mm -hmm. This is some of the uh, wild teas. Uh, so this is more like abandoned wild tea. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's not a... Um, uh, it's not like wild wild, but this is the tea that people planted some time ago, but it just kind of got abandoned and, oh, and therefore uh, it's, it's just all over the place. It's not, uh, um, it's much harder to pick as you can see, like it's not, uh, uh, it's definitely not easy to pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even see the people, you can only hear the voices. <laughs> so basically when you pick the tea, you just kind of keep pushing into the bushes. Because <laughs> I was like, how do you, there's not even a path, how do you do? They see how to do it? You just, you just keep pushing into the bushes, this is how you pick the tea. You just do this. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. It's, uh, uh, that's why wild teas usually are more expensive. I hope you can tell that this is much more uh, uh, labor intensive. And of course the quality is lower as well. So there's uh, supply and demand as well. Now this batch of wild tea actually belongs to this family. Sometimes the wild tea is on public land. So it's first come first serve. So uh, sometimes the picking is very... Uh, um, I would say it's, an, it's not the best practice picking because people really, really try to maximize uh, the teas they're able to get for their own household. But uh, since this is this household, so it's much better the picking. This is all wild tea trees. Uh, again, these are what they call abandoned tea. So it's basically it's wild because people have abandoned it. Uh, now you see it's been abandoned for so long, it starts to uh, grow along the branches as well. But most of them are still forming like a upward kind of uh, uh, tendency. This is still China tea number two. Uh, it's uh, very big. Uh, it's it's so fluffy the tea. It's really awesome to to feel to be able to feel the tea. It's kind of slippery here. The tea is very sturdy plants. You can always grab on tea leaves if you are uh, actually uh, coming up here. It's a very sturdy plant, the branches. It's uh, uh, a whole area of wild white tea. Now, um, it's, it's wild tea, but it's basically, it's still a cultivar. Uh, and this is actually China tea number two. But this is basically uh, abandoned tea. Remember, uh, if you 
uh, listen to the, our podcast uh, did by Ken uh, Cohen. Uh, he uh, in the podcast we were talking about. Oh shit! You can always rely on this person, but you can always rely on teacher to grab out if you're falling in the wild. So uh, basically, so we're talking about different kinds of wild tea. Now this is basically abandoned uh, tea that essentially became wild. Uh, now, as you can see, it's 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 wild. It's harder to pick. Uh, it's on a uh, much more uneven terrain, and uh, you basically just need to like kind of open up the bush and then and then and then push in to pick more tea. There's no other easy way to do it. Uh, it buds a little more unevenly, even though it's trying to number two, so it's kind of still kind of even, but not really even. <laughs> oh my god! I'm really slipping. Oh my god! Why are you not falling? Okay, I need to have better body. <laughs> okay, sorry, tea tree. <laughs> sorry, 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 little tea bushes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so basically, that's why wild teas are more expensive. Uh, it's it's no joke to pick these teas. Uh, of course, there's also uh, supply and demand. The quantity is lower as well.